Titus Benjamin with Texas Micro Center. Do you need help identifying the parts of your computer, both the inside and outside components? Well, we can help you out. Let's get started. Welcome back. In continuation with our identification series, first we are looking at the front and back connections and ports of your typical computer. Today we'll be looking at the inside of the computer. Now we have a lot of videos on how to build a PC and that is assuming you already know what the parts are. But here we're just going to focus on identification of the parts. Now here in this mess of jumbled wires, it's easy to get overwhelmed and confused. First, we're going to identify the power supply. That is this little guy right here. And this provides power, converts the alternating current from the wall of your home to direct current that the computer can use. This power supply, we're going to take a look at it real quick as you can read is 500 watts. It's always good to know what your power supply is. If ever you want to upgrade something in your computer in the future, typically a video card. Uh, video cards are rated and they have a certain minimum power requirement. Some of the more higher end video cards, for example, require at minimum 500 watts. So. The video card is requiring 500 watts to run, and then you have your processor, your hard drive, your memory needing at least another 125 watts, so that'll give you a rough idea of what you need to buy to replace your power supply with. Now since we're only doing identification, we're not really going to be tearing down this computer, just identifying its parts. Right now, we're taking a look at the, the motherboard. We've just identified the power supply. Now we're going to take a look at the motherboard itself. This mass central area here, this is where the processor is. The heat sink is sitting on top of the processor to help transfer heat from the processor itself as the processor starts to generate heat as it's being used. And then this fan blows cool air and then dissipates the heat. Acts like a radiator on a car. So this large blue area here is the motherboard. This card and this card are plugged into the motherboard to add functionality. This particular card is the video card we identified earlier and this card here is a firewire card. Motherboards typically have what we call expansion slots. Video card is sitting in a PCI Express 2.0 by 16 expansion slot and the firewire card is sitting in a PCI Express slot. Usually it's hard to plug a card into the wrong slot. It's either too short or too long or it fits just right. Now by taking a look over here, most of these cables that you're seeing this cable, this cable here, this bundle of cables, this is all coming from the power supply down below. That's to provide power to the parts of the motherboard. So we're going to zoom in into this section. This is the memory or RAM area and this is where they plug in. I'm going to go ahead and take one of them out to show you what one of them looks like. really bad cable management. Typically, <clears throat> when you're touching an internal part of the computer, you don't want to touch the gold areas here. It's okay to grab the back. But this is what your RAM looks like. And printed on the RAM usually is its identification sticker. That'll let you know what it is. This particular RAM and then from Kingston, it's got the serial number and all the pertinent information. Go ahead and plug that back in. Once again, we have plenty of how-to videos on how to build a PC. I will show you the installation of the parts and what parts to purchase. This is just an identification video to help you name the parts inside your computer. Once again, motherboard, blue section, processor, RAM, 
video card processor is also called CPU. The tower itself, this is referred to as a desktop or a tower. Referring to it as a CPU is technically incorrect. That is your CPU, your central processing unit. Now moving along, we have the hard drive. As you can see, the two connections here, this is for power, that's your SATA power connection, serial ATA, and there's your serial ATA data connection. This red cable is a serial ATA cable. And this is the hard drive. As you see, it's, it's plugged in right over here. This nice little screw is holding it in place. So that's the hard drive connection on this computer. Now, the one that is hard to see, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera around, is the optical drive or DVD drive. To get a different angle, here is the optical or DVD drive. They're typically loaded from the front. You push this button, you would uh, press the release and slide it out the front of the case. The only thing that we need to know is what the back of it looks like. So, again, we have the serial ATA data connection, and we have the serial ATA power connection, this multicolored power connection coming from, and it's even labeled, coming from the power supply. It's an L-shaped connection. Once again, power supply will label what the connections are. All these different co colored wires, you don't need to know what they are, just need to know where it plugs into. It's hard to confuse the two because the power connector is bigger than the data connection. Again, serial ATA, um, just like USB, it does not matter where it's plugged into as far as the connection on the motherboard. The serial ATA connectors are near the bottom of the motherboard. I will show you those in a second. And then it doesn't matter which one you plug into, the motherboard will basically automatically identify what the component is and will know what to do with it. So now we're going to go handheld a little bit. Here are the serial ATA connections on the motherboard. As you can see, there's still that same L shape. And we already have the, the, uh, that, the hard, this one's coming from the optical drive, and there it goes to the hard drive. I already have those plugged in. Other connections on the motherboard, worth noting, are the expansion slots connections. The smaller, one are, smaller ones here are PCI Express. Audio cards use those a lot. Here, these are the back ports or connectors for the uh, the uh, the computer. The USB and the FireWire they're directly connected to the motherboard. Again, the central processing unit. Again, the RAM. And then you pretty much just have the hard drive, optical drive, and power supply. That's it. Very simple. It's kind of like Legos, just putting all the pieces together. Well, this has been the inside of your computer. Thank you for watching.